it's got to be for everyone. It can't be only if you are perceived to be a perfect product, because there is no perfect product except the one you don't purchase. This world is sort of really heating up on the topic of sustainability. Is what you're buying as convenient to the alternative? And if it is, then we can talk about what are the features and benefits and what is the, uh, the price. But if it's much, if it's not convenient enough, you never get past the game. Yeah. And then no one even cares about what are the features and benefits and the price unless you hit that convenience. And look at the world, it is fundamentally moving to more and more convenience. Everything we see, you know, all the innovations are about life being easier, right? Um, and so in the sustainability space, I think we have to really center on that because a lot of sustainability, uh, uh, a lot of the sustainability movement has to do with sacrifice, change behavior. And that's neat, right? And uh, something that we could aspire to, but will we do it when no one's watching? Yeah. I think that's at least the big learning we've had is, uh, let's not get cynical about this. Let's say this is how it works and figure out how to play into it. It's when loop, like a big thing is you don't have to clean. You don't have to uh, fill it yourself. Like some other review systems, you just literally buy it and throw it away. Yeah. And the only change is you have this idea of a deposit and you have the idea of throwing it into a reuse bin instead of a recycling or waste bin. And the, and the more we can limit that to like, no change, the better. You know, in Loop we said, let's go after the big brands, you know, the uh, the haagen the Tides, the Cascades, the Pantines, you know, these things, versus, you know, uh, uh, the most like, you know, extreme eco brands, which may be even more intuitive of fit, because let's meet people where they are. Yeah. Same with the retailers, it's why it's Burger King, it's why it's, you know, Walgreens or uh, Kroger or whatever it may be, because it's like, how do we shift this stuff fast? You know, because there's also no time. Like the time is, uh, I don't think there's the time for behavior change anymore, right? It's gotta happen like with today's behavior. Yeah, and I think like the fact that you're focused on like design interventions that don't even necessarily put the burden on the consumer, but actually work with the consumer yeah. is a part of accessibility and it is, very integral to being able to scale these solutions up. Yeah, I think you're right. It's like the first question you asked, like this is why it has to be for everyone. We always think sensibly and think from a trash perspective of how to repurpose things to build them back. This is Melody from um, Brooklyn. Um, they, they, this wow. is from a place called Build a Green, so we took the bowling alley and turned it into a bowling alley lane. They, they create works of art from that. So, you know, like a great big corkscrew from old wine corks. We started with, uh, with cleaning materials. Then we started getting into more gadget accessories. Um, E-waste is a big one where we turn that into a number of things. Um, chip bags turning back into like a plastic pellet, which can be turned into a number of consumer products. Wow! <laughs> this is one of my favorite ones where we took uh, plastic pellets and turned it into like a toilet seat because wow. it's like waste and yeah. chewing. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild! Chewing gum, the chewing gum is made from a, pol a plastic polymer, so we incorporated what? that into a chewing gum collection. I did collection. not know that you chew. <laughs> Cigarette butts turn back into like a, a plastic because that's also uh, a plastic. It has oh. flame retardants in there. Wow. Um, and then like a number of upcycled items. So like vintage US Postal Service bags. Does Loop make an opinion, or even TerraCycle, do we make an opinion on the product we work with? And we go, no, we'll leave that to lawmakers, Yeah. right? And if it's a legal product, I don't have a point of view, let's figure out how to recycle it, how to make it from recycled material, how to have it reused. And if the organization is willing to play, then let's lean in and figure it out. And I think that's that's a big part, you know? I mean, we've partly been criticized for it, but it's also, I think, a part of like what we've held on to to say, no, it's gotta be for everyone. It can't be, only if you are perceived to be a perfect product, because there is no perfect product except the one you don't purchase. Yeah. Oh, the garden. Oh my God. What's up? Snow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So, is this a courtyard?
it seems like within the sustainability movement, there's these binary statements that you kind of touched upon that, you know, teachers can coexist, right? In the yeah. systems that we live in today. And one thing that I kind of struggle with in communicating with my audience, specifically when it comes to younger generation, versus, um, you know, moms and fathers yes. that interact with me is, how is this accessible to me as a college student or as a former college grad to be um, able to partake in these systems versus the family member saying, I see the investment in this for my family, for my children. Yes. Um, and I'm trying to kind of instill that type of culture uh, within my community. And I think there's this always generational divide, which I try to bring together, but it almost seems there's often um, these binary statements made that ends up hurting each other on both sides. I, I, that's right. I think. Look, the important part is to meet people where they are and use, even in like with the individual, we talked about in the company setting, is to think about it more. It's way easier to entice with carrots than it is beating with sticks. Yeah. You can create movement either way, but one is way more, you know, has a way higher chance of urgent success than, uh, you know, and, and you get there with a smile than the opposite. And I think each generation is different, you know, like, um, you know, generations that now have kids are looking out for their children. They also have more context on how the world works, you know, more wisdom. Younger folks, there's a lot of anger on like how the world they're adopting right now. And do they feel empowered to do anything, right? Um, to me though, like, like the end, there's this like great democratic idea that I think we always forget is that, and there's a lot of, this creates some finger pointing, but in the end, I, I, you know, we are voting, right, for what we want tomorrow with what we buy and what we don't buy. And that is hyper democratic. You don't have to be a citizen. You don't have to be of age. You can be, you know, it doesn't matter, right? And we are constantly voting, even if we're five years old or 80 years old. And we gotta take that seriously, because I think what happens is we vote, do that vote blindly. We buy whatever we desire. And then, and then we're upset about the consequences of what, you know, all that creates. And I think that it will be the biggest way to, ch to change things, you know, buy less and then try to buy the things we really buy, you know, in a way that is less, less harm than more harm. back to the 1950s everyone it's like loop has this really dope design and they're bringing things reusable it's a little old <laughs> <laughs> now this is really great silk needs to step it up and get their plastic packaging out of the games in the in the world of loop we were we had this really interesting thing where like i know that's your burger king cup versus your burger king cup just for a simple reason of having to get you your deposits back and the intuitive, like, what can you do with that? The intuitive is, yes, there's interesting data, you know, on like consumption, like that's sort of obvious. But we started thinking about like, what more can you do that's a bit more profound than understanding purchasing habits? And it turned out like the insight came that certain waste streams carry diagnosable samples. So think your air conditioned filter carries a sample of the crud in your air, right? That's what it's there for. Um, or your water filter for water, or your child's diaper is a perfect fecal sample. You know, no, no, no two kids poop in the same diaper, right? It would never happen. <laughs> and the diaper is a clean thing into which, you know, you, you, you would poop. And so for all these sort of examples, whether it's blood on a menstrual product or uh, saliva on a toothbrush, we're developing systems, uh, some of them will be live later this year, where you can send in like, say, one used diaper through a big diaper brand to us, and uh, it goes to a laboratory, analyzes the microbiome in the fecal sample, and gets you back a report on the wellness of your child, or the quality of your air, if it's an air filter. Wow. Or, you see what I mean, right? <laughs> and it's, I wanted to share that in the sense of like, how far can innovation in the world of waste go, right? Because to me, like, one of the neat things about this topic is everything in the world becomes waste. Yeah. It's this huge thing. And relative to how big of a statement that is, the, uh, the solutions are incredibly uninnovative, right? Because it's sort of like an industry that is like, you know, we want to, we don't want to think about it, right? It's behind us. It's not like entertainment or or you know or biomed or you name it, where like people are really gravitated to uh, to get excited about. She launched TerraCycle Home a few days, a few weeks ago, which is uh, cool. we are like one of the big challenges in recycling all over the world is that the recycling system is very fragmented, right? Yeah. Like depending on where you live, you may be able to recycle this, but not that, or you may be able to recycle glass, but not compost, or you name it. 
And so uh, what TerraCycle Home is doing is creating curbside uh, pickups like directly from your home for anything that you can't recycle. So you still do your normal thing, but then if you want to add on compost or part to recycle plastics or you name it, this is sort of a, like a light waste management system that allows you to recycle anything from, uh, from your home, which would be pretty cool. Wow, so, yeah. I love that. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> yes, yeah, totally. Cool. So yeah, so some fun, fun things kicking, you know? It's been, uh, been a wild uh, and exciting time.